Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our Johns Manville Optimizing Acoustic Performance in Pipe Systems webinar. I'm Kelsey Vaughn, and I will be your moderator for today's presentation. Before we dive into introductions, I would like to go over a few logistics. If you have any questions or concerns throughout the webinar, you may submit them at any point during the presentation viewing via the Q&A or chat feature at the bottom of your screen. We will address these questions live at the end of the presentation. Additionally, we will follow the webinar today with a survey. This is your opportunity to provide us with feedback on how we did today, ask any additional questions you may have about the topic, or suggest new topics for webinars you'd like to hear in the future from us. We are continuously striving to improve and evolve our webinars, so it is really important that you share any comments or suggestions you have so that we can better accomplish this. Or even if you feel like maybe we missed the mark today, we'd encourage you to fill out that survey. We use your feedback to improve our webinars and provide the information that has the most value to you. This survey is also a part of how we deliver the JM experience to you. Uh, the JM experience is based on four pillars of the JM culture people, passion, perform, and protect. And we believe it's critical to make sure we hear, understand, and respond to your needs in order to deliver the best interaction to you. We offer webinars like this one uh, to help educate the market and offer a tool and a resource for you and your business. But we understand that this isn't just a one-way street. So your feedback is really important to helping us evolve to better meet your needs. Also, we are frequently asked whether or not we send out these presentations upon their conclusion. While we do not send out the presentation itself, we do post a recording of it online for you to watch at your leisure, um, or even better yet, share with your colleagues. So this ensures that you have the presentation within its full context. Uh, with that, we'll dive into some introductions. Joining me today is Nicole Miller, Natalia Maximova, and our special guest, Greg Newman from Insulation Midwest. Nicole, could you start us off with an introduction? Yeah, so I am Nicole Miller, and I am the Mechanical Product Manager. Uh, I primarily specialize in fiberglass pipe insulation, as well as our Zeston PVC product line. And I also specialize in certain fiberglass boards used in commercial and light industrial applications. I've been at Johns Manville for six years, and I am based out of Denver, Colorado. Also joining us today is Natalia Maximova. She is the Mechanical Senior Product Engineer. She has been a JM for three years and she's also based out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, Natalia has extensive industry involvement with both ASHRAE and ASTM International. And also joining us today as our guest speaker is Greg Newman of Insulation Midwest. Greg has been a part of the insulation industry for a long time, and Greg has extensive industry knowledge of practical uses and best practices for utilizing insulation in commercial applications. So before we get started, I wanted to kick us off and give a quick overview of our primary focus here today. So we'll start off with the concept of, is acoustical control important? We'll discuss the challenges presented in multi-tenant spaces, as well as the growing industry and social trends of acoustical control in all aspects of a building. Then I'm going to turn it over to Natalia, and she's going to talk about how acoustical performance in pipe insulation is tested. And she's also going to discuss how the Johns Manville products perform in the specific testing environment. We'll then turn it over to Greg to talk about the practical aspects of installing pipe insulation to maximize acoustical benefit, as well as some tips and tricks to avoid common problems and mistakes. And then finally, we'll talk in more depth about the John Sample product offerings and the resources available to you to help address noise control. So starting us off, is acoustical control important? And the obvious answer is yes, but what we want to discuss here today is the additional challenges that multi-tenant spaces create when it comes to noise control. So in multi-tenant spaces, there's a lot of external and internal factors that introduce noise into the rooms of a building. 
Um, there's also a specific growing industry trend in large metro areas that lack land space where higher end buildings are utilizing the first one to potentially four floors for commercial applications. And then the higher floors are actually used for residential condos or apartments. And so you have the commercial spaces that don't want sound bleed over from the residential spaces and also vice versa. Someone in a restaurant doesn't necessarily want to hear a toilet flushing from a residential condo a few floors up. So what we're going to specifically focus on here today is the acoustical challenges presented from piping systems in these multi-tenant buildings. So those can, that can include storm or rain drain from roofs. It can be sanitary sewer, like I had mentioned, or it can be plumbing noise, which is also known as pipe knock. And when we talk about multi-tenant buildings, really this is anywhere where a multitude of people can be present. So it's not just high rise buildings, it can be a standard apartment complex, it can be duplexes, fourplexes, hospitals, hotels, universities, scientific laboratories, airports, et cetera. And so what are the current noise requirements for piping and plumbing? Interestingly, today there are actually very few standards and very little guidance for acoustical control in piping and plumbing systems. This is a relatively new focus in the industry, and it's starting to really kind of follow the historical trends and standards of acoustical control in wall assemblies and HVAC type systems. So you'll see in the table kind of to the right that standard plumbing noise thresholds are anywhere between 35 to 50 decibels. Um, However, in certain spaces where the tenant has paid a premium, such as luxury condos or apartments or office buildings, the expectation of noise control in those spaces is significantly higher. Um, in, in this table, the sound pressure levels are an average, but without much prior data, plumbing noise can be significantly higher in certain areas of a building, which is really driving a push in the industry for an ASTM standard of noise threshold in plumbing systems. So now I'll turn it over to Natalia to talk about how pipe insulation is tested for acoustical performance. First of all, before we start talking about the testing and performance, let's orient ourselves about the noise and the sound. So um, let's talk about the noise. The noise is really just unpleasant sound. It has this negative connotation. It's really the same thing as a sound. When we talk about the noise, we generally talk about frequencies. And here's an example of a cartographical representation of frequency range and what the noise sounds like. So at the low end of the frequencies, that's on the left, we have this throbbing, humming, roaring, and then at the high end, we have hissing and whistling. So, um, and also when we talk about the noise, we talk about the how loud is our things. And that's when, as Nicole mentioned, um, the unit of decibel is used a lot of times to talk about the noise level. So that's when we talk about the magnitude of the noise. Um, so as I mentioned, noise is generally has this negative connotation. So the occupants of the buildings will be complaining about the noise levels primarily for, for three reasons. Um, the first of all would be just a loud noise altogether. So it's just this background noise that overall the building is loud. Um, another reason why people may have, um, um, may, may, may feel reason to complain is because of imbalance in frequencies. So this is when we have um, either low or high frequencies predominating and it will actually be really uncomfortable for the occupants. And again, it could be occupants, the residents in the building, but it could be also staff in the office building or medical office. Um, another reason for complaint is inconsistent noise. So when the noise comes and goes, and it could be either, you know, toilet flushing in the 
you know, next door or the floor above, or it could be uh, all of a sudden we have the rainstorm and now this water is going from through the range range from the roof. So that could cause this inconsistent noise level come and going. And uh, also it's possible that all of these three things can happen at the same time. Um, and that's where you can have the com uh, complaints in, um, in a particular building and situation. So now that we understand the noise, let's talk about how we test for it and how we can provide you with the data to best address it um, in your systems. Um, so the first test method I'll talk about is the ASTM E1222. And this is a standard test method for laboratory measurements of the insertion loss of pipe lagging systems. So let's define a few things. First of all, insertion loss. Unless you are, uh, unless you are acoustician or um, have been working with acoustics for some time, you may, you, you may be not familiar with this term. Insertion loss is a reduction in noise due to lagging. Another term, what is lagging? So we call pipe lagging, it's anything that we put on the pipe to treat for noise. It can be just an insulation, could be also in your jacketing or the materials that we put around it. So that would be lagging. So again, the insertion loss is something that um, when you have the bare pipe, it's going to be loud. And then when you put some treatment on it, hopefully it will be quieter. And that's what we are um, establishing with this test method. So, um, so how does this test method actually work? So it's conducted in a reverberation room. So here's the picture of one. So in this room, you have basically no absorbing materials. And so the noise is allowed to bounce back and forth from ceiling walls. So it's a, it's a very loud room and it has a lot of echo. And um, as I mentioned, this is a standard test method in the laboratory measurement. So obviously in the reality, you're not gonna have this, but this is what we're testing in order to reproduce and in order to be able to compare different labs as well as different materials as long as they're tested in the standard conditions. Um, another, another piece that we do the testing is generally tested on 12 inch carbon steel pipe. Uh, while smaller pipes can be used, the 12 inch pipe is generally used uh, partially just because you can put enough noise into it in order to determine the differences between different lagging systems. Such if you think about it, if there's if we're not able to push enough noise into the system, then we will not be able to detect the differences um, due to some background noise that always exists. So there's going to be a loudspeaker on one end and blast in the noise. We're using the white noise uh, source for this. So it covers all of the frequencies that we just talked about. It has low frequencies as well as high frequencies. So it's a great source to evaluate materials and systems across the broad range of frequencies. So now we understand a little bit about this test method. Let's talk about the results. So um, here are the results that we have for the insertion loss. So first of all, let's look down the graph. So we have vertical axis, horizontal axis. Horizontal axis has frequencies. Again, low frequencies are on the left and high frequencies on the right. Um, the assertion loss is on the vertical axis. It's measured in decibels. Um, the higher the insertion loss, the better it is, because just to remind you, that's the difference that we measure between the bare pipe and the system with the treatment or lagging. So the blue lines here um, represent on this graph, that's our micro lock HP system. So we have one inch, which is the solid line, and the two inch, which is the dashed line. So Two inches of micro lock HP performs better as you can see the line is higher. The higher the insertion loss, the better it is. Um, so, however, you may be wondering, well, is this significant enough difference? Obviously, on the graph, it looks like significant, right? Um, so, it is. Um, so, let's focus on 4,000 um, hertz. And um, so, the difference here would be for one inch micro lock HP system, that we get 20 decibel insertion loss for 4,000 hertz. But for two inch, we get 26. It's six decibel difference. Generally, six to 10 decibel difference, we humans perceive as half as loud or half as quiet. So, that's a significant difference. So, for 4,000 hertz, two inches of insulation will be 
performance significantly better than the one inch in this particular situation. Now let's look at the next system that we tested. So this is MicroLock HP with the Zeston PVC jacketing. Um, so Zeston PVC jacketing used here was 20 mil. That's the, the most commonly used thickness for a commercial building situation, kind of multi-tenant situation that Nicole mentioned earlier. Um, so you could see that these both orange lines um, the solid line, that's our one, one inch micro lock system. And then the dashed line, that's with the two inch micro lock system. Um, they're above the regular micro lock HP system. So we see that there's going to be better performance over um, just the regular fiberglass with ESG jacketing. Um, I would like to mention that um, to the best of our knowledge, there's no acoustical information for PVC jacketing available in the industry. So this is the first time that um, we have this information available for you. Um, from perspective of applicability, okay, so PVC jacketing does show the improvement, but from practical perspective, um, let's say you're dealing with a situation where you have small spaces or tight spaces where you would like a better performance, but you don't have enough room to put two inches of insulation. Um, as you can see here, by adding Zestone PVC jacket on top of one inch of insulation will actually exceed the performance of just the two inches of insulation. So in case you have tight spots like that, there are creative solutions that now that we have the data available, you can kind of tap in and get the performance you're looking for and also work with the constraints of the systems you're dealing with. Um, the final system we're gonna look at is the one with a, uh, with a mass loaded vinyl that's the green lines here. Mass loaded vinyl is uh, uh, the material, it's uh, the black material was shown here on the picture. Um, and uh, it is a heavy density um, kind of rubbery material. It's loaded with mass, uh, generally barium sulfate. And uh, the material that we've tested here is one inch per pound uh, per square foot. So it's a heavy material that goes on top of the uh, micro lock HP. And again, we've tested it with a one inch and two inches of insulation. And we're presenting this data here. So the performance is a step above just the micro lock HP as well as the micro lock HP with Ceston. Um, also, if you're looking to deal with the lower frequencies, and again, those were the hums that we talked about, you could see that the um, green graphs are quite a, a bit higher in the insertion loss at frequencies under a thousand hertz. So if you're dealing with a lower frequencies, um, noise complaints, then the mass loaded vinyl can be the solution. Overall, mass loaded vinyl provides better performance across all of the frequencies. Um, so now that we've looked at the um, test method, let's see if we can actually make it work here on um, on the screen, we have a sample for us to experience. So this was conducted during the testing. We collected uh, the acoustical files. And what we'll show you is the noise level from bare pipe and then to various systems. If you have trouble hearing it, we'll, we will have the link with our acoustical landing page where you can watch it. Um, in case you have problems right now, or in case you want to watch it again in the future. But let's see if we can make it work here. I cannot hear it. Oh, here we go. Well, I'm glad, I think that the sound came through for me. Initially it didn't work out, but uh, hopefully you were able to hear it. 
And um, again, there's a drastic difference between the bare pipe and um, as we add the treatments onto the system. Um, so again, we will share. There will be a um, there will be a link to to watch this again if you'd like to. But with this, let's shift gears to different test method. And this is um, okay. I think I'm, oh, oops, very technical difficulties. It's ASTM E90. So this is the test method. Sorry about that. Ah, here we go. ASTM E90. So this test method, um, through this test method, we determine the sound transmission loss for different systems as well as sound transmission class. So this test method is primarily used for building partitions. So there will be windows, doors, as well as the building systems, kind of wall cavity insulation. And this test method, method is done by also testing of reverberation rooms. So we have two rooms. In one, there will be a sound source installed, a blast and noise, and in the other room, it's the microphone. And what we're doing is we're determining how much, uh, how much noise comes through the assembly under test. And the assembly, as even shown in this picture, is really a primarily flat configuration. So you may be wondering how we're doing this for pipe insulation. So for this test, we had to make the board insulation with the correct density as well as the binder chemistry. Um, and we were putting the treatments, same treatments that we just discussed, such as facing or the zest and PVC jacketing or mass loaded vinyl on top of that. So again, in this particular test, the testing is done in the flat configuration. So, um, so we were using the board, which is essentially a representation of the pipe insulation. So again, through this test, we get the tr sound transmission laws as well as sound transmission class. So let's look at the results. So here's the graph for us again. So on a horizontal axis, we have frequency in hertz. Um, again, the low frequency at the left end, on the right end, we have high frequencies. Sound transmission loss is plotted in the vertical axis in decibel. So similar color coding, the microlock HP systems are in blue, um, just the fiberglass alone with ASJ jacketing. So with um, one inch is in the solid line and dashed is uh, the two inch microlock HP insulation. There's an improvement in um, increase in insulation as we've seen with ASTM E1222 method. Um, we also see the improvement when we put the PVC jacketing. So that's our orange lines. So again, these data are for Zestan PVC 20 mil jacketing. So um, there is a step change there. And when we add the mass loaded vinyl on top of Microlock HP, we further see this improvement in um, all the frequency performance, but especially in the low frequencies. So as I mentioned, we uh, through, through this test, we get sound transmission loss. We we'll also get sound transmission class. So here are the results for um, sound transmission class for the same systems I have listed here. Um, so in general, for microlock HP systems, one inch and two inch, we're looking at STC or sound transmission class of A through 12. Addition of zest on PVC jacketing in 20 mil gets us to about 16 to 19. And we see a dramatic increase with mass load of vinyl up to 28 to 31 STC for those systems. I also would like to mention that while I've been focusing on microlock HP, um, we also have data for microlock HP Ultra. Um, so that's our um, facing, which has polycoding on it. And also we have data for the Zestan 30 mil jacketing, um, which can be used in some of the kind of heavier duty light industrial applications. So we have that data also available. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Greg to discuss some practical aspects of installing insulation. Thank you, Natalia. Uh, let's see here. High expectations for performance conflicts. Uh, 
when you get into this designing for sound, uh, there's a big difference between trying to put on this mass loaded vinyl versus fiberglass or even fiberglass with PVC. Now, when you look at it, when I generally lay it out, my guys can do fiberglass 21 feet in one hour based on rainwater or drain system. They can put the PVC on in one hour for that same amount. Now the mass vinyl, uh, you do fiberglass one hour, but it's gonna take you three times longer to do the mass loaded vinyl. Due to the fact that all the fittings, the fittings are pre-done on the PVC. Mass loaded vinyl, we have to pre-cut. Everything's gonna be mitered on that. And that's the, the biggest challenge with that. Uh, the smaller the pipe, like you got, you know, high rises, you got two inch drains, inch and a half drains in this uh, mass loaded vinyl. It's one pound per square foot. It's, it's almost impossible to wrap around the pipe and have it laid out. That's one of the worst parts of that. Plus the weight. If you try to do the whole piping system, you got to allow for your anchors in the concrete for the weight of this. And like I said, it's one pound per square foot. Next one, how you move that. All right, uh, as you can see in, in uh, a picture there, we're doing a high rise right now. Uh, the condos are estimated uh, at $1 million each. So they don't wanna hear someone take a shower above them or use the sink or the kitchen sink for that matter. So we found that wherever you change direction, that's where the turbulent waters were. So what we did is we insulated through the P-traps one foot down in PVC jacket. That works very well. Uh, we do have areas out here that we're using uh, the mass loaded vinyl also, but it's more on uh, lavatory fixtures, something with three inch, four inch pipes where they all come together. So that's where we're utilizing that. Uh, what's neat about this is you can utilize all the PVC fittings that JM makes, Zestan makes, and it works great. You know, all the way down to the laterals, the lateral and the 45s we can do. Uh, what causes noisy pipes? Well, it's uh, the change of direction. Up here in Minnesota, we do all the rainwater. At least we do at Insulation Midwest. So we don't hear the sound on that. We do all the horizontal and also all the vertical, which eliminates noise on rainwater. But the drain system, the drain system in a building, is, that's a tough one. And if you're gonna soundproof it, we, you need to lay it out so there's room to do the work. That's one of the biggest things. And that's one of the most cost in any building is labor. Material is standard. It's the labor. The more access that our guys have, the cheaper it will be and the better it'll look and where it'll perform. Now, we do soundproofing on a, on a lot. A lot of times you don't want sound to come into a space. But there's also a lot of buildings that we've done, courthouses and hospitals and boardrooms that we don't want noise from that room to go out for whatever purpose. So that whole system needs to be done, not just the fittings, but the whole thing. There's multiple pipes that we can do. We can do anything you can do, we can insulate, even conduit. <laughs> all right we're going to launch a couple polls now um, for everyone so if you could take a few moments uh just to answer a couple questions that would be great
All right, thanks everyone for uh, participating in a couple of those polls. I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Nicole to talk about some additional resourcing. Okay, so what are some available products and resources from JM as you think about acoustical control in buildings? Um, so, Everything that we've talked about here today, uh, Johns Manville does manufacture and is available to you through JM. So Natalia talked a lot about the Microlock HP um, and then kind of moving on to the Microlock HP with our Zeston PVC jacketing um, and then as well as the Microlock with the mass loaded vinyl barrier. Um, so these are all things that we offer. We do also offer the Microlock HP with a poly top jacketing, uh, which we define as the ultra jacketing. So if you do have any specific questions about a product, please reach out to your local market development manager, and they would be happy to give you some ideas of some products that can help you for what you are looking for. Okay, so by if you were to scan this QR code on the screen, you'll be taken to a page with additional resources on all of the products and testing methods that we've talked about here today. Um, also on this landing page, you'll hear and be able to kind of replay a lot of the information that Natalia gave you. And you can also go through the different sound qualities of the different combinations of JAM products when they're used in a real world application. So you can recreate that to show others. Um, you know, it's a great auditory example of the test methods, and it does really bring the graph shown in the webinars to life. And then some additional resources that we do have available to you. So if you go to jam.com and click on the source, we do have a multitude of webinars, like Kelsey mentioned before, this webinar will be recorded and will be placed in the queue of the webinars. If you want to show this to anyone else, um, we also have technical bulletins, we have blogs that really talk about what we've um, talked about here today. And then for anyone who subscribes to Insulation Outlook, in the February edition, we have an ad and an editorial that summarizes all of these points that we've talked about for acoustical performance. And if you do have any specific technical applications or a project that you're not really sure what to do with, um, our technical assistance team, John Elbram, is really great. He's able to answer most any question, any question that he can't answer, he will pass along to anyone on our team. And so also on jm.com, we do have all of our data sheets for the Microlock HP, the Microlock HP Ultra, and the Zeston PVC jacketing. In those data sheets, you will see the acoustic testing results. And you'll also find a lot more information around our UL listed and labeled and Intertech 2550 fire and smoke developed rating certification. Um, and then some new products that we're really excited to launch that complement the Microlock and Zeston product lines is the Microlock HP E3 with compression pack technology and the low volatile organic compound Zeston adhesive. The Microlock HP E3 compression pack is an unjacketed fiberglass pipe that's great for jobs that require a lot of material all at once. And the Zeston Low VOC Permaweld Clear and White Adhesive 
is a brand new market offering that meets the industry standards of less than 510 grams per liter of volatile organic compounds. And this is a product that meets those specifications without compromising performance. Um, so this was, a, this was a really quick introduction to these new product offerings. However, if you would like to learn more about these, just please contact your local market development manager. Thanks, Nicole. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple additional resources before we dive into the Q&A. Um, just as a reminder, we are um, on social, so follow us there. Our HVAC Mechanical Insulation LinkedIn page features the latest news and insights, and our at Insulation Intel Twitter account provides an industry-wide look at current trends and news, so make sure to um, follow us there. Um, and then additionally, we also have some training modules powered by Blue Vault. Uh, Blue Vault. We house a variety of online training modules there. Um, you can quickly scan that QR code on your screen to view and register for these free online courses where you can learn more about JM mechanical insulation and how to install and fabricate. Um, as a reminder, uh, a, a recording of today's webinar will be posted on the source in the next couple of days when it's live. Um, we'll send you a link for direct access as well. So if you missed any part of the presentation or you want to view the webinar a second time or feel free to pass it along to a colleague, um, you'll be able to access it um, on demand there. Um, again, for anyone who attended today, you will also receive a certificate of completion after the webinar that may be submitted for professional development hours, and this will be sent to you via email and should be in your inbox by next week. Um, and so with that, let's take um, some questions. We do have some coming through. We also got some questions pre-submitted, so we appreciate um, all of the feedback. Um, Nicole, I have one for you. It says noise can also uh, be reduced if we support the pipe properly. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so by supporting the pipe through either ceiling hangers or wall support, uh, the pipe is not going to sag. So therefore it really, it, it's not gonna come in contact with other pipes or materials that are going to knock against the pipe creating more sound. Um, Greg, do you have any other comments on that? Uh, if you're gonna insulate it, yes. Then you're gonna have to use pre-insulated hangers, whether they're clevis hangers or standard pipe hangers. So yes, you would need something if you were gonna do sound deadening. All right, great, thank you. Um, and uh, Natalia, uh, this one, I'm gonna shoot over to you. How does acoustic affect pipe performance? Great, um, thank you. So um, so the pipe performance, so it's a little bit un unclear what the what is meant by pipe performance. Um, so I'll take this angle and in case I don't answer, please feel free to follow up on this. Um, so, from performance perspective of fiberglass, it's non-combustible material. It has the flame spread smoke developed index is 25 is less than 2550. Um, it provides both thermal and acoustical performance benefits to the pipe system. So overall, really micro lock HP or fiberglass insulation will not have any negative effect on the performance. If anything, it provides only positive again because it's non-combustible. Flame, of flame spread smoke developed in X of 2550, so you can use it in the planning situation. And again, it's thermal and acoustical performance comes hand in hand, so you're not really, there's no trade off in a way. Thanks, Kelsey. Great. Um, and then, Natalia, a few more technical questions. Why use a 12 inch pipe instead of a smaller pipe? Um, good question. So as I mentioned, the E12-22 allows to use for basically any pipe you want. And um, so however, they do specify the 12-inch pipe. Um, 
we have tried doing the testing. So I speak from experience. We have tried doing testing with a smaller pipe, starting with the two inch um, and with a different material pipe because I know so one of the, uh, um, there was one of the submitted questions also, why not test PVC? We've tried PVC. Um, it's, um, so regarding the size, you really just can't provide enough noise into the pipe to be able to detect the differences. Um, it's literally the, the difficulty of directing the noise into the smaller opening. So as we've tested two inch and one to four, as we were increasing it, we see this improvement in the detection of differences between different systems. So really the 12 inch pipe is the best way to go based on what we've tried. Um, again, different materials are allowed. Uh, one of the reasons why we've tested the, um, the carbon steel pipe is because first of all, it's specified in the method, while it does allow the leeway for other materials, but that one is specifically called out and also, that's the pipe that is uh, readily available at the testing laboratories. So we can certainly go and try uh, different material pipes, but that would be essentially different testing. If there is an interest from the engineering community, we can certainly do that um, and evaluate different material pipes as well. Hopefully that answers the question. Great, thanks, Natalia. Um, and then also another question about why only test in straight pipe and not pipe with elbows? Good question as well. Um, so that's the way the method is currently written. So um, I just don't think we have uh, any procedure that has been established in the industry that we could do that. We'd be happy to evaluate the fittings as well. But that's just the way it is and at the moment. And some of it also, if we think about it, it's a standard practice. So while it may not cover all the scenarios, just like a lot of other test methods, it covers the wide range. And by being not very specific, it actually allows us to be comparing different materials or comparing different laboratories. So there are pluses and minuses to this approach. Um, but yeah, right now it's currently only on straight pipe. Great. Um, and then what is the thickness of uh, the mass loaded vinyl that was used? Um, so I mentioned that the, the mass loaded vinyl, usually it's kind of essentially specified by the, by the mass per square foot. We've used one pound. Um, don't remember the exact thickness, but it's about three millimeters. Um, so it's not very thick. Um, also, it is important when sizing the systems to realize that you need to have a, a uh, you need to have an overlap. And um, as Greg alluded, um, the mass load of vinyl, while it's pliable, it um, there will be some potential air gaps. So while the material itself is uh, pretty thin, um, it is. Um, um, it will be a little bit more just because of the overlap in the air gap. Great, thanks. And then there are another uh, attendees wondering if the mass load of vinyl has a fire smoke rating. Ours currently does not. So it is part of our industrial portfolio. And um, so most of the times uh, it will be used in industrial systems under the metal jacketing. Um, we actually do have additional information on the system with this mineral wool um, where mass load of vinyl is also used. So again, currently our material does not have the flame, flame spread smoke developed value. Thanks, Natalia. No I do see a question here about technical data sheets. Those are available on jm.com. Um, also, if you were able to, to scan uh, that QR code with our acoustics page, you would be able to uh, see the, the data sheets linked there as well. Um, another question coming through um, regarding what is the best pipe material uh, to use? Ooh, that's a controversial question. <laughs> And maybe uh, Greg and I can take uh, a little bit on it. So based on the based on the reading the various sources of um, reports that I've done, 
Uh, generally, the carbon steel, the heaviest type, uh, is the best material. Then uh, it will be a copper. Again, it won't be used on all of the same systems, for example, but um, it will be carbon steel, then you have copper, and then you have plastic materials, even though there are special grades of plastic materials, which can be thicker and heavier, which will approach even the performance of carbon steel. Um, so again, that's based on the evaluation um, by various laboratories that I have seen. Um, and Greg, I know you have some also experience. I don't know if you want to chime in here. Yeah, uh, we see, especially on drains, you know, uh, some people use plastic pipe, some people use iron. Uh, the best probably is the iron. It's going to last the longest. Uh, can we insulate it? Yeah, but you got bands on it. PVC is glued, which uh, also increases your, our efficiency of installation. So, no, it's, uh, yeah, the steel pipe's the best. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Natalia. Um, another question here, what is the effect on thermal retention with these acoustic insulation products? Or do you have any acoustic insulation that does not have any effect on the heat loss of the system? Uh, this individual says, if we have a system that we prefer to not insulate in order to allow for heat loss, is the acoustic insulation, or, uh, what is the acoustic insulation that you would recommend? Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, I think this is the one we may need to think through and talk through the details and maybe understand as to um, how much of the heat loss are we talking about? Just get a little bit more of the detail. Um, again, as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, our insulation, both fiberglass, or if you were to use mineral wool insulation, by default, they're gonna be providing all, both thermal insulation as well as the acoustical um, performance. Um, so that one we may need to discuss kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Great. And I do see quite a few questions also coming uh, through about additional information related to industrial acoustics. Um, uh, Natalia, is there anything that you want to add to that, or um, we could also follow up with these people um, after the webinar? Um, sure. Yes, absolutely. So we, so a lot of times for industrial situations, it will be systems with mineral wool for like LNG type of scenarios, um, and um, the testing is done using similar method to ACM E1222, but that's ISO 15665. And we have done this testing, we've published the results. Um, that, that would be found on jm.com and the industrial insulation and the mineral wool uh, pipe section. And those systems um, generally will comprise of uh, mineral wool um, with or without a mass load of vinyl and with aluminum or stainless steel jacketing. Um, so we definitely have that. And in case there are any questions, we can certainly follow up on that. Uh, but we do have that information available. Great. Um, as well as I think we have the source, and I think we do have a webinar on it as well. Yeah, Sorry, I just we, thought about it. <laughs> we absolutely do. Um, so great point. Um, everyone, again, you can find that on the source on jam.com uh, for additional on-demand webinars. Um, another question, uh, what frequency noise level should be expected for a natural unassisted gravity flow for a story building? Good question. I don't have an answer right at the top of my head. I think it may be dependent on the material of um, construction of the pipe as well as uh, um, dimensions of the pipe, um, and then, for example, again, based on the research, uh, the, um, the speed of the material or the speed of the flow in the pipe will affect also how many turns there are. Um, so that one would be another, I would say, good question to follow up in detail, um, kind of on, on the technical side. Awesome, thanks Natalia. 
Um, a lot of great questions, everyone. We really appreciate all the participation. Again, as Natalia mentioned, we do have a variety of different industrial uh, related acoustic information. So please uh, visit jam.com. And again, if you want somebody to reach out to you or if you have additional questions, um, the technical line is great. Or, and we can also have um, a, a jam uh, member follow up with you as well. Um, as a reminder, um, the recording of today's webinar will be posted, um, so please take a look out for that. And we do thank you very much for attending today. We hope uh, you found the information useful and relevant. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us directly or via the survey that will pop up on your screen directly after the webinar. Um, and with that, otherwise take care and enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks everybody. Thank you.